Hello, Econ 201 student. Today we would like to continue the second part of chapter four, okay, talking about market equilibrium. So once we learn the demand and supply, then it will be easier for us to know how to get a market equilibrium. So from this graph, you can notice we have the quantity on horizontal axis, right, and price on vertical axis, demand curve downward sloping, right, and supply curve upward trend. So you can see the intersect at one point, and that point is what we call market equilibrium. Okay, so you can see in this in this graph we have the market equilibrium price. Okay, so market equilibrium price is the price that can make a quantity demand equal quantity supply. And from this table, you can see the price when price equal three dollars. We have quantity demand equal quantity supply, all equal 15 units. Okay, so you can see at $3, that will be our equilibrium price. And then correspondent, we can find our equilibrium quantity that will be for 15, okay, 15 units. So equilibrium quantity is the quantity that demand and supply equal to each other. Now let's look at two common economic situation. One is called surplus and another one is called shortage. Okay. For surplus, it means when a quantity supply is larger than quantity demand. Okay. So put quantity supply is larger or greater. Okay. Sometimes we can say greater than quantity supply. Okay. So in this graph, you can see if the price equal five dollars, what will happen? When the price equal five dollars, then we can find out the corresponding point on supply curve that will equal twenty five lattes. However, for demand side, only nine pe only nine lattes will be bought right by this five dollars per latte. So you can see in this case, we have the quantity supply, 25 lattes are greater than quantity demand, nine units. Therefore, it will create a surplus of 16 units. So let me just briefly emphasize, okay? If this is the price, this is the quantity. We know demand curve is downward trend, right? Supply curve is upward trend. This point is actually the equilibrium point, right? However, if we assume now the price is at this level, okay? So you assume this is the current price, P1. You need to draw a horizontal line first, okay? Draw a horizontal line first, and then it will cross this part. This is the point A, okay? This point A will be on supply side, and then you can find out the quantity supply. And then there is another point here, right? On demand side, we call this as point B and then corresponding, you can find a quantity demand, right? And in this case, we have quantity supply actually larger than quantity demand and which will result in surplus, right? And what? how much the surplus or how many surplus? The surplus will equal quantity supply subtract quantity demand, okay? In this case, we will have the quantity supply equal 25 and then quantity demand equal 16. And that will make there are 16 that is will be in surplus. Make sense or not? Okay, so the very, very important thing is once you give you the market price, draw a horizontal line across demand curve and supply curve and find out the intersection points. Okay, now this is for surplus. My question here is, if market now has surplus, will the market be stable? Is this surplus will be stable? Probably not, right? Because now sellers has surplus, it will try to sell, sell the inventories, right? So the sellers, they will try to lower their price. And when the price become lower, it might motivate the buyers to buy the products. Therefore, in this case, okay, surplus will not be stable because sellers will try to lower the price and then buyers will buy more products until which points until they 
reach this equilibrium points. Okay, I put this one is E represents for equilibrium points. And this is what I want to say here for surplus. Facing surplus, sellers try to increase sales by cutting price, and then it will cause the quantity supply decrease and quantity demand increase, and which will reduce the surplus until the market reaches the equilibrium. Okay? So until the price decrease, until the market price go back to the equilibrium points. Okay? So this is when the market face surplus. Now let's look at another case. Another case will be shortage. Okay? So what happens in shortage? Shortage means consumers would like to buy more. However, there are not available, not enough products in the markets, right? So shortage means quantity demand. Quantity demand is greater than quantity supply. Okay. So let me draw a graph for you as well. This is for shortage. Similar, okay. I will put price here and the quantity here. You can see demand curve is still downward sloping, right? And supply curve is still upward trend. They intersect at this point. This is the equilibrium point. However, now if we assume the market price is at this level, okay, this is the P1. Currently, the market price is at this level. Very important. Draw a horizontal line, okay, across demand and supply, okay? So it had create two points. This is the points on supply side, okay? This is the points on supply curve. So this will be our quantity supply. And this is the points on the demand curve. So this will be our quantity demand. You can see in this case, we have quantity demand larger than quantity supply, which means consumers would like to buy more. However, there are not enough products in the market. So you create a shortage. And the shortage will equal quantity demand subtract quantity supply. Okay. In our case, you can notice when a price decreased to $1, the quantity demand now increased to 21 lattes and quantity supply will just five lattes, right? Therefore, it will result a shortage. You use quantity demand, 21 subtract quantity supply equal five units, right? So totally we will have the shortage equal 16 units. When the market facing shortage, the market is not stable as well because consumers would like to buy more. However, sellers has not enough products. Then what we need to do, the consumers might bid up right just like the housing market if there is no enough house available in the market and buyers want to buy the house they will level up the offer right so for the consumers they will level up their expectations for the price therefore the price will goes up when price goes up it will motivate the sellers to provide more products right so the price here will goes up until they reach the equilibrium points, okay? Until they reach equilibrium points. So here, facing shortage, okay? Sellers can increase the price as well. And then that will make the quantity demand decrease and quantity supply increase and will shrink the shortage. Finally, okay? Finally, when the price go back to equilibrium and then we will have the quantity demand equal quantity supply. Then the market will be stable at this equilibrium point. Okay, so this is the shortage and surplus. Remember, the very, very important thing is when, even uh, for other questions, okay, when you tell you the market price, remember to draw a horizontal line across demand curve and supply curve and find out the quantity demand and quantity supply. That will help you to determine either the market facing shortage or surplus, or the market just reached equilibrium. Now, why does price decrease over time when there is a surplus? Here is just a summary, okay? So, what I would say, if a surplus exists, okay, 
firms will have to eventually get rid of their inventories, right? So firms will try to cut the price. And when the price goes down, quantity demand can increase, right? And that will shrink the surplus. And why do the price rise over time when there is a when there is a shortage? So when a market facing shortage, what happens? Consumers, as I just talked about, consumers they will try to overbid the the price for the product, and then that will motivate sellers to provide more products. That will also increase the quantity supply, and then at the same time decrease the quantity demand, which will also shrink the shortage okay so either surplus or shortage the markets are not stable okay only the market reach the equilibrium points then the market will be stable okay so let's talk about in a competitive market especially in a perfectly competitive market okay we will say in equilibrium the market clear okay the market clear see write down the words for you the market will clear when the market reached the equilibrium the market clears and then when market clears means there is no shortage no surplus market reached the equilibrium all right now let's move on to the last part. How to analyze the change in market equilibrium, okay? So there are some events that might happen in our society, in our markets, and that will definitely change the market equilibrium. So there are several steps to analyze. The first step, we will try to determine, okay? We will try to determine if an event happened, what will happen to our market. So the first step, we will decide whether the event will shift the supply curve or demand curve. So that will be the very first step. And then we'll decide which direction, either shift outwards or shift inwards. Finally, we will use the demand and supply model to find out a new market equilibrium, okay? So there are three steps. I will use an example to talk about it. So let's look at this example. So this example talking about the market for frozen pizza, okay? First, we have the price for frozen pizza and price for a quantity for frozen pizza on this two dimensional graph, okay? And generally, okay, let me see. This is the price. This is the quantity. Originally, we have a demand curve for frozen pizza is marked as D1. Supply curve of frozen pizza marked as X1, okay? Now let's see what will happen. This event, frozen pizza is an inferior good and now your income decrease. So when your income decreases and frozen pizza is an inferior goods, which means your income decrease, but you buy more frozen pizza, right? So originally, okay, in this graph, I will just mark this is our original point, okay? I mark it as point A. This is our original equilibrium points. I put P1, Q1. So A is our original equilibrium points. We have price equal P1, equilibrium quantity equal Q1. Now it emphasizes frozen pizza is an inferior good. And once your income increase, do you still remember for inferior goods, income decrease, however, you buy more demand you buy more frozen pizza, okay? So this is in very good. Anything change in pizza's price? Nothing, right? We didn't mention anything change in pizza's price. However, because of income decrease, therefore demand will increase. 
So increased demand will shift the demand curve to which direction? Will shift this demand curve to the right hand side, okay? And what will happen to the new equilibrium? This will be our new equilibrium points. You can mark this as P2 and this will be Q2, okay? So we'll have the new equilibrium points at point B have the price equal P2 and quantity equal Q2. So you can see in this case, I use three steps, right? Three steps analyze. First, I need to determine whether this event will affect demand curve or supply curve. And I know income is one of the demand shifter, right? So it will affect the demand curve. And then we need to determine which direction it will shift to the left hand side or to the right hand side. Pizza, frozen pizza, okay, it's no pizza. Frozen pizza is an inferior good. Therefore, income decrease, demand increase, which will shift the demand curve to the right hand side, result in a new equilibrium point at point B. So, point B, we have price actually compare with point A, okay, price increase, quantity demand also increase. So there are three steps. Which curve will shift? Demand curve. To which direction? To the right hand side. How does the equilibrium changes? We have the higher equilibrium price and higher equilibrium quantity. Okay. So this is what we talk about. Now let's look at surprise sign. This graph doesn't show it really clearly, okay? So I will just show the surprise side here also on this board. For the surprise side, what happens? Price of the flour, one of the input to making frozen pizza decrease. So now look at what happens in the second scenario. You can think about here, flour is a major input to make frozen pizza, right? So when flour price decrease, the cost of making frozen pizza decrease, right? So the sellers or the suppliers of frozen pizza, they might would like to offer more pizzas, right? Therefore, let me write, let me just analyze this event. P, Q, originally demand curve, supply curve. And this is original equilibrium point, okay? I mark as point A, P1, Q1, okay? So our original equilibrium point, P1, Q1. Now, cost decrease, what will happen? Cost decrease. Cost decrease will shift to which curve? Cost is an important supply shifter right so when cost decrease actually we can have more supply okay so supply will increase right so it will definitely affect the supply curve and supply curve will shift to which direction supply curve will shift to right hand side right supply curve will shift outwards or to the right hand side and which will result in a new equilibrium point, which is at this point B, right? So at point B, we have a new price at P2 and a quantity at Q2, okay? So this is point B, we have P2, Q2. So you can notice, compare with A and B, price actually, equilibrium price decrease. However, we will have higher equilibrium quantity, right? So that will be the analyze of this event. Which curve? Shift. Still three-step analyze, okay? We notice cost decrease, supply will increase. So definitely supply curve will shift. And then to which direction? It will shift the supply curve to the right-hand side, right? And to which will result in the new equilibrium price and new equilibrium quantity, okay? So that will be our second case. Now for example three, you were talking about now supply and demand shift at the same time, then what would happen? 
So that will be a little bit tricky if the supply curve and demand curve shift at the same time. Okay. So let's see, for example, three. So example three is very important, okay, because it will summarize what we have learned before. Let's look at this example three. For these events happen together, your income decreases and at the same time, the price of the flower decrease, okay? So now this event, so these two events were affected demand side and supply side together. Then let's analyze. Price, quantity, demand curve, supply curve, okay? This is the original equilibrium points. I have marked it as point A, okay? P1, Q1. So point A, P1, Q1. At this point A, this is our original equilibrium points. We have the equilibrium price equal P1 and the equilibrium quantity equal Q1. And then look at this case. Now you also need to use the three-step analyze. Just let me uh, okay. okay, so let's look at those events, okay? When the when your income decreases, what what happens? We know frozen pizza is an inferior good, so when your income decreases, it will definitely shift the demand curve for frozen pizza outwards, right? And when the flour, which is the major input to make frozen pizza, when the price of flour decrease, it will shift the supply curve to, it will, sorry, it will shift the, yeah, shift the supply curve to the left, right hand side, right? So, So finally, here, these two events will shift the demand curve and supply curve at the same time and then result in a new equilibrium point. I put this as point B, okay? So look at this point B. P2, Q2. So we will have the new equilibrium points, P2, Q2. And then you might have the conclusion that compared with A and B, we have price, equilibrium price decrease and equilibrium quantity increase, right? This is from this graph. However, is that true for your analyze? Probably not. Okay, look at what I'm done, what I, what I will do for this type of question. So when the demand curve and supply curve shift at the same time, you should be very careful because you can also see one of my drawing here. Price, quality, demand side, supply side, right? Income decrease will shift the demand curve of frozen pizza to the right hand side. This is our D2, okay? And flour, the major inputs to make frozen pizza, the price of the flour decrease will also shift the supply curve to the right hand side, okay? Now compare with our original equilibrium points. This is our original equilibrium points, right? Point A. And our new equilibrium points is at this one, right? Point B. We might have the same price as the original equilibrium points, but we have higher 
or have more quantity, right? So at this point, we would like to say price doesn't change. Okay, I use this one. Price doesn't change. Represents price doesn't change. However, we have the quantity increase, right? That could be also the same thing. And then I can draw another graph. Price, quality, okay? Demand side, supply side. Similar, okay? We notice that this is the original equilibrium point. So, okay, mark is point A. P1, sorry. And Q1. Now, for the new equilibrium points, we notice that the demand side will definitely shift the demand curve to the right hand side, okay? This will be our demand curve. For supply side, it will shift the supply curve to the right hand side as well. And then result in new equilibrium points. Okay, at this one, I put this one is point B. And look at this point B, what happens? At this point B here, we have price at P2 and quantity at Q2. So I can write it down here. We have uh, original equilibrium points P1, Q1, right? And then we will have new equilibrium points P2, Q2. So compare with these two points, we will have actually price increase, right? and quantity increase as well, right? So you can look at my this three graph. Those three graph actually all reflect these two events because income decrease will shift the demand curve. All those three graph shift the demand curve to the right-hand side. When the flower's price decrease will shift the supply curve to the right-hand side. So you can see supply curve will shift to the right-hand side. But what will happen in this case? We can notice the price will either decrease, no change, or increase, right? Then what about a quantity? The quantity or increase, right? The quantity or increase. So for these three cases, I would like to say the quantity will definitely increase. However, the change in price is uncertain, right? The price could decrease, could no change, could increase. However, the quantity will definitely increase. So when the demand and supply curve shift at the same time, you should very pay attention, pay attention to the magnitude of how these two curves shift, okay? So this will be very important in this chapter. You should be very, very careful about how the magnitudes of these curve shifts, okay? So I think that could be the, the things I want to emphasize in this chapter, okay? Let me just... Okay, so that could be a very, very important points in this chapter at the end. When the demand curve and supply curve shift at the same time, you should pay attention to the magnitudes of how demand curve and supply curve shift, okay? Maybe the quantity will change for sure, the price is uncertainty, okay? Or sometimes maybe the price will change for sure, but the change in quantity is ambiguous, okay? So I think that's the end of chapter four, okay, talking about demand and supply model. So this is one of the most important economic models, either in micro and macro. And if you have any questions, you can just email me and then we can set our time to figure it out. Thank you so much.